You can't gang! So this is an ABAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does anybody have any questions? I love it. <laughs> What's up, Econ Gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today, we're talking about supply and demand, specifically price controls. This is going to be Module 8 for Krugman's Economics for AP Course 3rd Edition. Now, if you are taking an AP course or you are taking an introductory macroeconomics class, this is the perfect video for you. All right. So what are price controls? Price controls are the legal restrictions on how high or low a market price may go. Now, what does that mean? That means that the government can come in and they can tell you how high or how low you can price your particular good. Now, a price ceiling is how high a seller can uh, sell a product, meaning that they cannot sell it for anything above the price ceiling. A price floor is the lowest a seller can sell a product, meaning that you cannot sell that product below the specific price that's dictated. Now, here we have a model for rents, uh, apartment rents. The most common price ceiling that governments impose is ceilings on rents. Now, here we have an equilibrium point where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. At $500, you have 25 apartments that uh, where our demand is equaling our supply or our, our equilibrium point. Now, uh, for this particular model, the government comes in and they set a price ceiling. They say that uh, price ceiling must be set at $250, meaning that you cannot charge above $250, right? You have to charge $250 or below. Now, for the price ceiling to be binding or meaningful, it needs to be below the equilibrium point. And so just kind of how things are in economics is the ceiling is going to be below the equilibrium point while the floor will be above the equilibrium point. Now, price ceilings, they cause shortages, which lead to inefficient allocation to consumers, right? And you can see that in our model here, the shortage you have at $250, you have only uh, 20 apartments or 20 producers of apartments that are selling apartments at 250, but then you have 30 uh, individuals that or consumers that are willing and able to purchase at $250. Um, so because of that, we get wasted resources, inefficiently low quality, and then eventually we get a black market. So how does that look in something else? Let's say that the uh, government comes in and they are going to put a price ceiling on cheese, on craft single cheese. Now, what ends up happening is because the price lowers for the craft cheese due to law of demand, lower price means higher demand, more people are gonna go in and they're gonna purchase all of the cheese, right? And because the price gets lowered, the law of supply, producers are going to produce less cheese. Now, what that leads to is it leads to empty refrigerators where the cheese is stored, people wanting to get that cheese. now. Because of the empty shelves, the craft uh, cheese company, they may come in and say, hey, look, let's, to maximize profit, let's lower the quality of our cheese. Or they may even say, hey, instead of selling boxes of 50 cheese singlets, let's change that to 25 single servings of cheese, right? And so that is lower quality and inefficient quality for the consumers. Now, from that, you're going to get uh, probably some people lining up to purchase cheese, right? And the first ones that purchase cheese, they could turn around and they could sell that cheese for a higher price, right? And above, and a lot of times that what ends up happening, uh, that big uh, price is above the original equilibrium point. This, of course, is kind of a black market for cheese, not really realistic, but it's, uh, it happens when we see price ceilings. Uh, in the market. All right, now moving on to price floors. Here we see a model where we're looking at wages and workers, right? Our wages are at $5 and you have 25 workers that are willing and able to work at $5. And that's where supply equals demand, our equilibrium point. Now, uh, the most common price floor is going to be minimum wage. Each state has a different minimum wage, right? But um, that is considered a price floor. 
Now here, at uh, if the government were to come into our model and set the minimum wage at $7 an hour, here we see the demand curve would represent the fast food restaurants that want to hire workers at $7 an hour. And then the supply curve, that would be the workers that were willing and able to supply their, their labor at $7 an hour. Now you can see here that what ends up happening is you do not have as many jobs available right? And you have a larger pool of people willing to work at $7 an hour. The result of this is that you're going to get inefficiently low quality quantity and inefficient allocation of sales among sellers. You're going to get wasted resources, inefficiently high quality, and then eventually leads to illegal activity, right? There will be a surplus of the good. And sometimes what ends up with that surplus of a good, for example, if we were to go back to our cheese example, right? The government came in and they put a price floor on cheese. That surplus eventually is going to lead to spoiled cheese or to moldy cheese, right? Not a good situation. Um, so that's it for module eight. I want to thank you guys all for listening to my YouTube channel. If you could please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Peace.